All right, farmers, now that you have your ribs up and uh, you, you've started the process of keeping those level, we've already alluded to the fact that the next part that you're going to do is put your cross connectors over the top of the hoops, hopefully in as about as much of the center as you can, and then, then you're gonna start running your ridge pole. So the cross connectors themselves are two pieces of metal with two nuts and two bolts, carriage bolts to be precise. And so keep in mind that those carriage bolts go on the bottom and then the rounded part of the cross connector is going to go over the top and pretty much follow the contour of the hoop. So once you have that saddle in there, that gives you a hole that you can run the ridge pole through and then tighten down at the forefoot on center. And that's really what you're, you're starting these connection points that really start holding this thing together. And that's where all the strength comes. So your ridge pole is simply a long piece of pole. In a bootstrap farmer's case, it's a 75 inch piece of one and three eighths tubing. It's open on one side and swedged on the other. So each one fits in to the next one. You'll run a screw onto the side or onto the bottom to keep it from coming apart. And that's what you're gonna work all the way down. And so again, I know a lot of people are listening to this. If you flip over to YouTube, we're gonna put lots of examples and lots of videos in here. And the one thing that we've started doing uh, as of late is even on the cross connectors is going ahead and running a self tapper into the pole itself, into the hoop or into the ridge pole, just for a little bit of further connection. Every now and then these, these things, uh, maybe they don't get tightened down enough, whatever the case may be, I don't want this thing even loose just a little bit. I wanna make sure it's connected at the point. So don't be afraid to go ahead and run a tech screw and right now that's what we're advising. So at this point of the hoop house, obviously you're going to be very high. And by that, I mean you're gonna be on a ladder or maybe you're going to be on some type of lift where you're up in the air and you're probably working above your head uh, measuring these things out from four foot on center, manipulating the pipe through the cross connectors, putting the swedged in the open end, putting the self tapper in, and then tightening down the cross connectors. So I do want to talk a little bit about safety. I mean, you can look at hoop houses, you can hashtag hoop house on Instagram, and you can see all kinds of people putting these structures up. Uh, a lot of times they're on a ladder. Hopefully you have somebody holding it. Uh, a lot of times you'll see them in the bucket of a tractor. Uh, I've certainly been guilty of that. However, as a company, we can't say that that's a great idea. So ideally you would be uh, renting a lift and doing things absolutely as safe as possible. Uh, however, you know, all you guys are farmers and you guys all pretty much like to do what you're going to do. So just keep in mind, you know, safety is a big factor. So with all that safety consideration uh, talked about, you're gonna get off of the ladder and you're gonna look at this thing that you just built and more than likely the ridge pole is gonna be a, way, a little wavy. So what do you guys say about that? Well, one thing I would do is if you have somebody working with you as you're installing the ridge pole, I know it's up and down the ladder if, you, if, if you're by yourself, but as you install the, the ridge pole, it's easier to look at it visually and make sure it's lined up. Um, it can be off a little bit. If it's off a couple inches from one hoop to the next, it, it's, it's not the end of the world. It, it's still serving the purpose to lock each hoop together uh, and to make the structure, you know, a, a unified or a single piece. So if it's a little bit wavy, it's okay. Again, it's still going to perform its function as a hoop house. And folks, we keep, we keep harping about that it's okay because this is, again, one of the main questions that we get. People freak out, you know, if they're off just a little bit. The structural integrity is what we're looking for. And these poles and these connection points, no matter where they fall, dead on center or off just a little bit, it's done its job. Uh, I know a lot of people really want this thing to be visually, you know, as appealing as possible. You know, people are going to come out, they're going to look at your farm, this, these things are going to be in pictures. So we certainly want you to do the very best that you can. But, you know, hey, in the heat of the moment or the cold of the moment, whatever the case may be, you know, some, sometimes it's going to be off. And remember, once that cover is on, it's, uh, it's going to hide a lot of these imperfections. And the very last little bonus thing, uh, we do have purling kits available and there's purling kits available from other folks. So basically walk us through that install process and what the purpose of the purling kit is. So the, the purlings are just like the ridge poles. The, the ridge pole is going to run straight down the center. The purlings are going to be the exact same premise as, as the ridge pole, except they're going to be between your hip board and the ridge pole at the top. You're going to come out a little, uh, probably about halfway and then install the purlings along 
the side. So that's going to give you additional. It's going to give you additional port support locking the hoops together, as well as additional support on the top section of the plastic. Uh, it it will give you a little bit more snow load for uh, inclement weather. But but again, remember, snow is a maintenance item. So if you do get snow, just make sure you're you're getting it off of the hoop house. All right, now that we've got our ridge poles and purlings up, the next thing that we're going to talk about is the hip boards and base boards, or in our case, the hip and base brace. And we'll talk about the difference of that in the next segment.